Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone joining from around the globe. I take this opportunity to highlight the significance of one of ORF's latest monographs titled Developing a Green Taxonomy for India, a Rule Book. Given what has transpired thus far and what is expected of India as an important influence on the global trajectory of climate action. As one of the fastest growing global economies, the third largest carbon emitter and the second most populous country in the world, India's climate action will be decisive for the global calculus of climate change mitigation. At COP26 this year, Prime Minister Modi delivered India's five elixirs to the fight against climate change and in doing so demonstrated India's readiness to be a leader on the international chessboard of climate change. The highlight was the much-awaited commitment of becoming net zero by 2070. This has significantly raised India's climate ambition. Committing to this five-point action plan while aspiring to become a $5 trillion economy will make India's development pathway exemplary in circumventing the trade-off between climate change and economic growth. A lighthouse for emerging economies confronted by this trade-off. India's green transition in the face of its renewed climate commitments will require several billions of dollars in investment. However, the investment peculiarities of green projects do not allow them to align with the risk return profile demanded by conventional financial institutions. However, green finance serving such projects does exist. Nevertheless, India has managed to attract only a trickle of this pool. One of the reasons limiting India from accelerating the inflow of green finance is its high risk perception as an emerging economy. This situation can be partially remedied by articulating a national green taxonomy. A green taxonomy standardizes the notion of green finance and establishes eligibility criteria for such finance. The development of a green taxonomy is likely to rule out plural definitions of green, minimize incidence of information asymmetry, and in turn, the risk of greenwashing. There are many investors out there who are keen that their investments be put to work for environmental protection, climate action, and so on, while yielding monetary returns. A taxonomy can provide guidance and confidence to such investors and boost green finance. This has motivated our research on India's green taxonomy. Several nations have formulated their own version of a taxonomy. Some of these taxonomies exhibit salient features which can be incorporated into the Indian version. There are multiple ways in which a green taxonomy can boost green finance. These ways reinforce the need to develop such a framework. It provides the much needed visibility to green sectors other than renewable energy and helps them garner the finance they need. By delineating eligible economic activities, the taxonomy helps financial institutions understand the investment peculiarities of green projects and leverage financial innovation to deal with them. The taxonomy provides direction for developing not just green financial markets, but also 
the green finance ecosystem and formulating an appropriate incentive structure for promoting green finance. Financial institutions and businesses can refer to the taxonomy to manage their environmental footprint, while regulators can mandate disclosures aligning with it. The government can use the taxonomy as a touchstone to assess the alignment of environmental outcomes with a net zero India. Our research on the green taxonomy identifies a five point action plan, an illustrative rule book that policymakers can refer to in developing a taxonomy for India. First, develop a taxonomy that focuses not just on climate change mitigation and adaptation, but also on other pressing environmental problems confronting India and for economic activities spanning across high impact sectors such as power, transport, agriculture, manufacturing, waste, and buildings. Second, eligibility criteria in terms of greenhouse gas emission thresholds must be based on latest climate science and be consistent with 1.5 degrees Celsius. Third, the technical screening criteria must be technology agnostic so that the taxonomy is not rendered irrelevant or redundant in case of a technological breakthrough. A technology agnostic taxonomy allows the nation the freedom to choose a green pathway from several different alternatives. Fourth, the taxonomy must be harmonized with international frameworks while adapting to the specific domestic circumstances. Fifth, the taxonomy must align with national environmental norms and standards, which themselves may need to be made comparable to international ones, so as to circumvent greenwashing. New norms and standards may also need to be established where they do not exist. Our work has also made recommendations on developing an ecosystem that supports the implementation of the taxonomy. Such recommendations relate to correcting the poor compliance culture in the context of environmental norms and standards, measures to circumvent greenwashing while implementing the taxonomy, and mandatory disclosure and reporting protocol aligning with the taxonomy. These are some of the key takeaways of our green taxonomy monograph. Thank you very much.